Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Geography. This is Episode 2. In today's lesson, we will be learning about earthquakes and volcanoes. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. In today's lesson, we will be learning about earthquakes and volcanoes. Firstly, earthquakes. Both earthquakes and volcanoes can be explained by the theory of plate tectonics. The Earth's crust consists of a series of plates. There are seven main plates and many smaller ones. Some plates consist of continental crust, while others are made of largely oceanic crust. Convectional activity causes the plates to move. The edges of plates are called plate margins. There are three types of plate margins. At a destructive boundary, the plates move together, but at a constructive boundary, the plates move apart. At a conservative boundary, the plates move side by side. At a constructive boundary molten rock or magma rises to the surface forming new crust. This forces the existing crust apart causing seafloor spreading. This causes continental drift. At destructive margins, one plate is forced under another into the subduction zone. Seismic waves, as a result of plate movement, cause earthquakes. The focus of an earthquake is a fault deep in the Earth's crust. The shock waves move out from the focus and reach the Earth's surface at the epicenter. Most earthquakes occur along plate margins. The effect of an earthquake can be measured on the Richter or Merkley scales. The Richter scale measures the strength on a scale of 1 to 10. An earthquake measuring 7 on the Richter scale is 100 times stronger than one measuring 5. The Merkley scale measures the physical effects of an earthquake on a scale of 1 to 12. Less economically developed countries suffer the greatest loss of life from earthquakes. This is because buildings are not as strong and emergency services are not as efficient. The economic cost of earthquakes can be greater in more economically developed countries as the economic life suffers greater disruption. There have been many attempts to reduce the effects of earthquakes. More accurate forecasting of earthquakes allows earlier evacuation. The use of cross bracing and installing rubber shock absorbers in foundations make buildings more resistant to shock. Now let's talk about volcanoes. Volcanoes occur where there is a weakness in the Earth's crust. This allows magma to move to the surface where it forms lava. An active volcano is one that has erupted in living memory. A dormant volcano is one that last erupted in historical times. It can never be assumed that a volcano is extinct. Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted violently in 1991 having been dormant for 600 years. Magma can also bubble up to the Earth's surface through fissures or cracks, which eventually forms lava plateaus. These weaknesses in the Earth's crust can be subclassified as follows. Island arcs. For example, the Aleutian Islands. This is where two oceanic plates converge. One plate is pushed downwards, the plate is subducted, into the mantle. As the subducted plate melts, magma rises to the surface forming numerous volcanoes or island arcs. Mid-oceanic ridges. For example Iceland. Tension in the crust leads to deep rifts. Magma rises up to the ocean floor along these rifts, forming new crust. The ridges form a continuous line of submarine volcanoes. In places, the volcanoes rise above sea level. Hotspot volcanoes. Rising plumes of magma reach the surface in the centers of plates, an example of this is Hawaii. Continental oceanic plate margins. Here the oceanic plate is subducted beneath the thicker continental plate. As it melts some of the lighter oceanic plate magma forces its way to the surface, forming volcanoes, for example the Andean volcanoes. Flood basalts. Magma reaches the surface through great cracks or fissures in the crust, caused by tension, allowing vast amounts of magma to reach the surface. These eruptions build up great thicknesses of lava, known as flood. Basalts. 
The buildup of material from a series of eruptions forms a volcanic cone. The shape of the cone depends on the type of material and the chemical composition of the lava. Viscous lava forms a steep-sided cone. Thin, non-viscous lava produces a low-angle, shield volcano. Many cones are composite as they consist of layers of ash and lava. Other volcanic hazards include Nui's Ardents, which are superheated clouds of gas and dust, Lahars, which are mud flows, as well as ash, pumice, and toxic gas. Despite the danger, people still live close to volcanoes. Volcanic soils are very fertile. Tourists like to see volcanic hot springs, geysers, and boiling mud. Geothermal energy produces electricity. Precious stones and minerals are often found in extinct volcanoes. Check out the description for a link to test your knowledge. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.